Okay. It's been a while, but definitely not my fault. Alex was MIA, and unfortunately, I'm not capable to do things on my own. Just to yet. Anywho, hmm, let's do this already. If we open Emacs and go to Tools and Games, there is a game called Multiplication Puzzle. I don't really know how to play it, but that's all right because there are much bigger issues, like how we even type on Emacs. Luckily, we still can play with the GTK implementation. The rules are as simple as to match a number to a letter in order to solve the multiplication. Zero to B was the wrong answer, so the next best strategy is to cheat, which we can officially do from the app menu. Even better, there is also a cheat cut. Done. But if you still care about the gameplay and not the victory, you just need to guess the multipliers. So it goes four times four, sixteen. We curry one. Four times three, twelve plus one, thirteen. We curry one. Four times two, eight plus one, nine. Seven times four, twenty-eight. Eight. We curry two. And anyway, that's pretty much it. Seriously, though. When you port games from Emacs to GNOME consoles, that's some true innovation. A color picker, classic. So we click anywhere to pick a color, and we instantly get the various color formats together with a handy copy button and an option to give a name. Clicking on the color itself will generate more color patterns for us that we can quickly export them if we want, and we can continue clicking on any color, and the app will loop its functionality and create more patterns. In fact, this app is so much dedicated to the color formats that, from the preferences, we can even set the order of them. And if that's not enough, what about editing the actual strings? Eyedropper comes with a search provider, and if we activate it, then we can search for colors directly from Shell Overview. But this app, just by being a typical app, poses a great threat to usability. It means it needs multiple reopens and closes, and very often we're gonna lose it on workspaces, which is not an ideal situation if we need to pick colors continuously. For instance, the Power Toys color picker uses a system-wide shortcut to launch, and moreover, it's not a traditional app, but it's more like a desktop widget that, after we select a color, we can press Escape to close it. That's not exactly news, but didn't get the chance to call it out. So Flat Seal is finally ported to Libatwaita. By the way, Flat Seal is written on JavaScript, but now there is a new TypeScript SDK you can use and code a bit safer. Oh, and there is this template you can use for getting started in no time. So you want to add some noise to your images? Just scale down the color pattern with halftone. You can choose from three different dithering algorithms, and additionally, you can change the brightness, the contrast, and the image size. When finished, you can save in various formats. Currently, the app is using Image Magic, but future versions will move to Pillow Library that gives more dithering options and custom color patterns. When you listen to Queendom, then you know the things are getting serious. I'm running an older version because the newest has some typical Python crash, but all the functionality is here anyway. So, from the preferences, we can select what models we want to enable, and that also includes custom ones, and also the very advertised ChatGPT4, which requires a paid subscription when the Bing engine is for free. 
From header bar, we can quickly select the default model, although the UI has slight changed in the latest version and it's faster to access. Well, from that point, we can just chit chat with the selected AI, which is extremely non depressing when you don't have friends or a life. Now about the usability of the app. Perhaps the performance is identical to using the original services, but the actual overall experience lags behind, mostly because of the format of the responses and special the format of dialogues, plus there is the lack of history. Next, and by the same developer, we have the imaginer that uses language models capable of creating images. The UI is closely matching the Bavarder design, with a provider's list inside preferences and a quick selection on the main window. And by the way, that version on the video is also a bit older. In the meantime, I think it would be better if those two apps could be merged. It's the same maintainer anyway. Anywho, we finally know. The most perfect file manager for Linux, according to AI at least, is Dolphin. Ha! Huh. There are many apps around that can transform images to ASCII, but only few can do that with such sweet drag and drop. It's also Chino compatible, but colors would be a nice addition. The app can load data from two columns files, for example this file, that the values are separated with a space. Actually, we can use different deli meters, exclude rows, and some more options. The second way to import data is by generate them directly from an equation. I know this isn't the most advanced equation ever, but I'm not a rocket scientist. Now we know each other a bit better, I must warn you for further features that I have absolutely not a clue what they do. But hey ya, uh, you can check them out on FlatHub. Alright, this ain't a GNOME app, but I'm really fed up with the performance of OBS Studio that in every release gets slower. So this video is fully recorded with the GPU screen recorder which is unbelievably performant. On the downsize it can't capture on Wayland, so I had to use X, which reminds me. Pretty please, somebody make a decent GNOME recorder. Mera mera.